Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and the new windmill aeration system is set up on our pond, and I'm really excited about that. It's been a long process to get to this point, and I think it looks fantastic. Now, I'm reshooting the intro after the windmill's done because there are a few things I wanted to clarify. In my original intro, I told you that this was a how-to video. This is not a how to set this up video. Mescan Windmills has a video showing you exactly what to do with all the safety recommendations and I would say you should probably watch that one as a guide to set this up. But I think my video might be a little bit more entertaining so if you're going to all the trouble to buy and install one of these windmills you might watch them both. So without any further ado we're going to jump back to the beginning of this process show you how we got to a standing windmill and then I've got the last step which is getting our air stones put out into the water. So I've got my wheel hub setting on this air hose and then basically this entire windmill uses the same bolts and nuts. So I'm going to take a bolt and a washer and I'm going to get a washer and a nut for the other side of this bolt. I'm going to take the blade, put it on to the smooth side of this wheel assembly and put a bolt through, put on a nut and a washer. And I'm going to attach three bolts per blade and attach all the blades without tightening anything down. Now that I have all the blades on, I need to put on the outer supports. It says to put a little bit of bend in them. After putting it up there, I can see which way Got the tabs up, you just bend it a little bit like that will make it easier to get the bolts in. Now I've got one here and one here that are going to share a bolt on this end. These outer supports use the same bolts and nuts that you use on the inside of the blades. The only difference is with these you don't use the washers and you're going through two supports with each bolt. Here is one example of why I don't want to refer to this as a how-to video. The Meskin YouTube channel has a setup video that spends a good bit of time talking about the safe way to do this. And that starts with something that's common sense like wearing gloves when working with this metal. And I got a few small cuts on my hands from just not taking that precaution. So I definitely recommend you wearing gloves. And if I was doing it again, I would tighten these bolts up with the whole thing laying down instead of standing up. Basically the entire windmill uses the same bolts and nuts and washers. That this is a longer bolt to go through this and hold the tail fin on. Like what? Sticks and stuff? Yeah. So, I, so nobody so no so nobody gets in there. Okay. Can you bring me the drill real quick from over there? Sure. Yeah, after I get them all started you can do it. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a second. You need the rail on the other side. Okay. Now before you pull the trigger, make sure it's all the way on there. So put it on. Make sure it's all the way on there. Then when it stops, then you go to the next one. Oh, it's not on there. Gotta get all the way on there. Hold it still. Now go. Whoa. Only go for a minute. Okay, next. Good. Wait. Okay. Nope, that one needs a little more. Okay, next one, hold on. Okay. It's not on. Go ahead. Nope, you didn't have it on there. Do it again. Good, those are all tight. Okay, our second component is complete. This is the tail wheel that spins it into the wind. Make sure we're always taking advantage of that wind. Okay, so the next step is to use the leg section that has extra holes to attach to the pre-assembled tower top. 
The next thing I did that I wouldn't recommend to anybody is working by yourself. Up to this point, it's not too bad, but you'll see as I start on the next section, you really need at least two people because you're trying to hold multiple things at once and it's really awkward. So if at all possible, find someone to help you out with this kind of project. Now we've got the first set of legs on. We're going to add the second set of legs. That requires you to put several pieces together at once. We have these, I guess you'd call this like a C channel that goes across here. And then we have our next leg pieces, which go under this top leg piece so that water doesn't run down in between them. And then on the lower of these two holes, we'll also put one of these short straps in. These straps make an X across each section and kind of squeeze everything together with a turnbuckle. Now we want to take and make an X with two of our short bars, one medium to the right and one long. Then we're going to use that X to stabilize our next set of legs and this medium length will have a turnbuckle on it. Here you see that struggle I was talking about earlier where all the pieces are flopping around and I was trying to use clamps and punches to hold everything still. And I think it would have been pretty smooth with two people and easy with three. Okay. So, that will bolt on there and this will bolt to a turn buckle that will bolt down there. But first, we have to do the same thing on the other three sides. So I'll go ahead and flip it over, get that done and be right back. I repeated that process on the other sets of legs. After doing the first one and figuring it out, it went pretty smooth, went pretty quick. And the next section will be exactly like that section, except on the first section, I only had to put a bolt through three pieces here. On this one, I'll have those same three pieces plus my cross brace from the other side. So now we've got a cross brace on, on both bolt holes. So none of the other bolts on this used washers, but this one does on the turnbuckle. So we'll go bolt, washer, turnbuckle, brace, washer, and a nut. I've actually got a longer set of bolts that I'm guessing is meant to be used on these. I've got this fully extended and it reaches right to where this corner is. The idea of having these turnbuckles is so that after everything's built, you can tighten these down and it'll kind of squeeze everything together and hold it tighter. Now that I've got that one in, I'll pull this bolt back out, put our cross brace in. And the first one's probably the hardest, right? Definitely wouldn't recommend doing this by yourself. This piece of this cross brace doesn't have to be attached until later. But if you just put a bolt through it now, then it's not flopping around in your way the rest of the time. I've already made a separate video talking about why I think the American Eagle windmills sold by Joe Meskin windmills are superior to all the other options on the market. At, after building it and having it finished, I feel even stronger about that statement. Okay, so we are down to the last set of pieces on the tower, which is just this bottom leg right here. Compared to all the rest, this is pretty easy step because I'm only holding up one thing. I'll have to take all these previous bottom braces off that I had on. At this point right here, I really should have went ahead and put on the clamps that hold the rebar. But I didn't figure that out till later. So 
If you're following along, go ahead and add those now. Okay, this next piece, I can't remember what it's called, upper frame or something. It just slides over the tower and kind of stabilizes this top piece. I put it together off camera because it's so simple that I didn't feel like we really needed a demonstration. But you've got two types of pieces. One has a lip on one side, the other has a lip on both sides. So the ones that have a lip on one side go on top and these go on the bottom. And then we're just gonna slide this over and it's got holes right here that bolt onto holes in the tower. Okay, the next step is to put these legs on. Now these clamp onto that giant rebar that holds the whole windmill up. Now that I see how this works, if I was doing this again, I would put these on as I put this bottom rail on because I have to take each bolt back out to put them on. So just a thought I had that might make this a little bit easier next time. The next step is to start at this end and just go all the way down the tower, tighten up all the bolts. Then after that, we tighten the turnbuckles. We had some extra difficulty because I'm building this on an island and the windmill is longer than the island and I've already got my form in the way so it made it a lot more difficult to work on it and to stand it up because it's hanging off the edge on one end and it's elevated on the other. Now we're putting the compressor on. You want to grease that shaft so it can turn and you want to put Teflon tape on the threads before you attach the hose adapter. We found the easiest way to tighten that up was to put a pipe wrench on the fitting and then turn the compressor. Took a lot less time and energy that way. The next step is installing the tail fin and that was a very simple process with just four studs and four nuts. And then we put on the actual prop and that was pretty easy too. There's one slight bit of difficulty just getting the key lined up but other than that you just put in a retainer clip and tighten up the one bolt we just took a big leap from a windmill assembled on the ground to fully erected and concrete already poured and why did i do that the answer is i was a little overconfident and i had a scheduling issue and standing this up didn't go very smoothly, to be honest. So their instructions specifically say you need six adults to lift this windmill. And I thought I had four, maybe a fifth one coming, and I had the concrete scheduled and the concrete paid for, and everything was going to happen early in the morning. And we got out here and I was only able to get three people and we could not lift it. Not a little, not at all. And just the takeaway here is you have to have six people. We ended up getting it stood up. We used a, some ropes and we used the tractor, but it's not a, I'm not going to demonstrate that on camera in a way that's not recommended because if someone has an accident trying to do it the way we did it, then I'm not going to be responsible for that. So do it the smart way have six adults here. I actually did make a video forming for concrete underneath this and the only reason I didn't show you us putting the concrete in is because I didn't want to waste the concrete driver's time. Whenever he showed up we were supposed to have it ready and we didn't. We had it stood up but we didn't have it anchored to the ground and so he had to wait about 20 minutes while we finished what we were doing. And I already felt pretty bad about that, so I wasn't going to tell him, hold on a minute while I get the camera on. So what happened, or what you do, is you set this windmill in place, and you set it on some blocks to hold it up in the air. Then, you saw earlier, we've got these clamps right here. We left these clamps loose. We drove this one inch diameter like four foot long rebar into the ground on all four corners and then we put a level on these bars right here and then locked it down so now we've got this up in the air locked in place it can't move take the blocks out and we poured concrete into that form 
and our concrete's about six inches on that corner, it's seven inches here, and down here it's about nine to ten inches because I'm compensating for the slope and I wanted a level pad. And the concrete truck couldn't get out here. They ran their chute across right to the edge of the island and we had to pour it into five gallon buckets and then carry those five gallon buckets over here. And at one point we ended up having to climb the chute, hanging out over the pond. Like it was kind of a nightmare to be honest. And I was lucky to have two really good helpers who came out here and worked their tails off in the heat manually carrying buckets of concrete over here and helping me get this done. At the same time, we concreted the ends of, that hold the bridge down and got that all secured. So the only other thing you didn't see is this hose right here, it's regular air hose, plugs in to the fitting on the bottom of the compressor. We put a little grease on it, plugged in the air hose, ran it down the tower and held it with zip ties. Now we're ready to put the air stones in the ground, but I left the splitter over here. Let me go grab that. I don't know what they do different on them, but in my experience, the black zip ties hold up to sunlight and the clear ones will disintegrate within a year and fall off. So we're gonna cut this right here. We've got this splitter here, or we just plug this into the airline coming off the tower. Then we can shut one stone off both stones off or leave them both open. I'm planning, of course, to leave them both open and I'm just gonna zip tie this right here. The next thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna take weighted airline because this is just regular airline that would float. I got the weighted airline that will sink to the bottom. I'm gonna connect that weighted airline right here. The other end of it will connect to these air stones and I'm gonna put that in a five gallon bucket. A Meskin did not tell me anything or it might be in there and I missed it. But I don't remember anything in the installation instructions about how you place these. But my previous experience with air stones is I'd prefer not to drop them down. And, and if there's a layer of muck and mud in there and you drop this in, that mud can kind of cover over it and cake this up. May or may not be a problem, but I'm just going to do it this way. And I'm going to connect my airline here, set this in a five gallon bucket that has holes drilled in it so that it will sink and let water in. And then I'm going to take those out and place them in the water and I'm going to tie rope to the handles of the buckets and then bring that rope up here and tie it to this. So if I ever have a problem or I want to change how my, my diffusers are set up, I can just reel it in with the rope. Then I'm going to bury these two lines and the rope just from here to the edge of the bank, which is only two feet. And that seems pointless. But my concern is that my kids, grandkids, will be out here. And I don't want them tripping over the rope and falling in the pond is what it is. We're about to get into the fun stuff. Ugh. Okay. I've tied a rope on here. Got both of these lines are 100 foot. Let's see where the end is at. I've lost the end. Got two 100 foot pieces of weighted airline, two 100 foot pieces of rope. Got one end of my rope tied to the bucket, the other end tied to the tower, one end of my hose on here, and the other end on the diffuser. I'm gonna set this down off the bank, get the other one set up the same way, and head out into the pond. Second diffuser in the bucket, second rope tied on here. Now I went in and got my muck boots on thinking they saved me wading out there. It's not deep, but it's too deep for those muck boots to save me because I want this all the way out there, not trying to mess around in a boat. I'm going out there barefoot and just going to get soaked and muddy and get it out. I've watched a lot of other videos about pond aeration and one area that people run into problems is if they have a diverter like I have to put two stones off one pump 
you want to be careful that you don't have one stone that is a lot further away or in a lot deeper water. If they're pretty much the same, you'll get the same amount of air going to each side and just have a more efficient system. And that's what I did here. And for some reason, the camera cut off before I got the second one out in place. Well, I got one aerator out there about 60 feet this way. The other one's probably 75 feet that way. But they're both pushing air through 100 foot of line. Both of them are pushing into four feet of water. They should aerate equally. And I saw the video from Country View Acres where he had a problem with killing all his fish from too much aeration too fast. And the fact that this runs off winds means it's going to be intermittent. And I've already had an aerator running in this pond for the last year. It was just too small of an aerator. There is the electric aerator that I've been running. It's going to run on that side. We'll have one there, two over here. We should have plenty of aeration now, which is what we need, because the muck on the bottom of this pond is so thick. Water's only four foot deep, but there's another two foot of muck. And then the bank should be, the water should be two foot higher. So we got six or seven foot of water in here, especially once we get the muck cleared out. But I want to see those bubble. So I'm going to make that windmill spin and I want to see if it aerates. Jumping back in here real quick, I've, the rest of the video is done, but I forgot to mention these. This is True, Bo True Blue Easy Solu Pack. I got these from Meskin too, so it's probably on their pond aeration website. A little bit easier than I've dyed the pond each of the last two years with a liquid that I had to try to disperse. This has this outer package, you rip the little tab on it. And then this package is water soluble, so you just throw that in and it's going to dissolve and kind of spread. So I'm going to put one in the small section. There's only a little bit of water being shared between the bridge, so it's not going to mix very fast. So this section will be a little bit darker than the other side for a while. I'm going to throw the other one out there, and in a couple days when I'm out here doing something else on the pond, I'll show you what it looks like. It feels so good after all this time and all this work to see the windmill pumping setting out here on the island with a bridge to access it. I had a vision for that a long time ago, and now it's a reality, and that is a good feeling. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. Put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.